So we're going to start off by going into the DATS and searching for a WebSocket. Notice that there is a location for the network address and the port. So let's pop back over to our WebSocket King. We're going to copy the address. I'll reconnect. And then let's, I'm going to turn off active first. I've had it touch designer kind of crash if you paste it in at first. And let's delete this port 443 from the end and the colon, and you're gonna specify that here instead. And then now we can activate it. What I like to do to test this out in Touch Designer is to open up the text port. So we can split our pane left and right, and then here I can turn this area into the text port. And this is actually a live Python interpreter. So the code that we can write to be able to handle the WebSocket connection is all handled right here. And one thing I like to do is just kind of add in some print statements to start to see what's going on early on. Let's go ahead and put this into an active mode so we can start typing. And anytime there's a connection, I'm gonna go ahead and print connected. And then anytime that it disconnects, print dis connected and we can test that out by going back to the WebSocket component and we can turn it off and on. So we see that it disconnected and now it reconnected. Next, let's look at how to send a message using our WebSocket component. We can actually use a separate text stat in order to do this. If we go into the common section, we can change it from plain text to Python so that we get syntax highlighting. The first thing that we'll do is look up what functions are actually available for a WebSocket component. And you can do that by going into the Python section here under the help. You'll notice that there's a function called send text. And you can see here that that's how we can actually send messages. So we just need to get a reference to our WebSocket component and then we can call this function on it. So it's called WebSocket1. We can write op web socket one, and then we can call send text, and then we can send it text, whatever we want. And to run this script, you can right click on it and you can hit run, but you're not gonna see anything happen. If you wanna be able to see something in the console, we can say like print, we ran the script and we can run it. The other thing too though, is that you're not gonna see anything in the WebSocket King either though. And that's because we kind of just did the equivalent of sending this. Notice that it'll send, but it doesn't get received because we're not sending it using our JSON format. To do that, we can import JSON and we're gonna make a dictionary in Python. And we're gonna call this our data and we can use the same curly brace notation. So we'll make our initial test. And then there's a built-in function for JSON called dumps. So we can call json.dumps and you pass in our data. And now when we run this, you'll see that we actually just received our test. Okay, that's great. So this gives us a nice starting point. Why don't we go ahead and build our slider first so that we can have a working example of sending slider data to our WebSocket. We're gonna make a slider in Touch Designer. Go over to the comps, search for slider, and then we're gonna place down a null so how do we get how do we get this value anytime that it changes? If we put the slider into an active mode, you can see that we get the value changing, but we want to be able to run some code anytime that this value changes. If you right click on the last section here, we can link up a dat and there's actually a chop execute. If we place this down, and we open up the parameters, notice that there's these different callback functions here. 
So by default, value change is turned on. That's the function that we do want. There's other ones that you can toggle on and off if you'd like as well. So if the value goes from off to on, then it'll run whatever code you execute. In our case, we just want it whenever the value changes. And what do we want to do? Well, we really want to just take the value from here and send it through our WebSocket. So I'm going to actually take this chunk of code here and copy it. In this script, we don't actually need any of the while off or on, things like that. I think it's easier to kind of clear it up so you can see this better. And at the very top, we just need to import JSON. Let's start by just printing our value. And you can see that now, whenever we change our slider, that value gets printed. So instead of just printing it, we are going to send it over our WebSocket message. I'm going to go ahead and paste what we had before from over here. And our data, maybe instead of calling it test, we'll call it slider1. And here, instead of 1.0, we're going to pass in our value. So now, check this out. Anytime that we change this slider, if we go back over to WebSocket King, you'll see that we get all of those values changing in real time. OK, so we just completed our first part. We're able to send data from Touch Designer through our WebSocket. This is great. One, one thing that's a little helpful to do as an optimization is to get a reference to our component outside of this function. So a way that we can do that is by defining our value outside. We'll get a reference to it. And then we need to get access to this variable within the function. And we do that by saying global ws. So we know that now we're defining ws locally here, and it's a reference to the WebSocket. And now we can say ws send text. This is just a more efficient way of doing this.